Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I'm going to be talking about Stoned Gremlin Productions, specifically Brad and Dave from Stoned Gremlin Productions. And what I'm going to be talking about today is uh, I'm going to be talking about their 30-minute review of the movie The Case for Christ. Uh, so let's jump into it. So my name is Scott Garibay. I'm an evangelical Christian. Um, I was saved when I was 15 years old uh, in Springfield, Pennsylvania. Uh, actually, so I was raised um, Baptist by my parents. They were Baptists. Uh, they shared the gospel with me and uh, brought me to church. And um, you know, and I, I I went along to church until I was until I was I went along with them to church until I was about. I'd say uh, until I was about you know 13 or 14, and I never gave them any trouble with it. But when I was 13 or 14, I actually hit the point where I'm, I I understood predestination, and I said, you know, I think predestination is unfair. I think uh, you know the fact that God picks who goes to heaven, um, that's that's a problem, right? And you know, then Larry Hoskins, my youth pastor, explained God doesn't pick who goes to heaven. You know, we. we we are able, he gave us free will to choose, and at the same time we're elected, right? So he explained the paradox of predestination to me, and when I was 15 years old, Larry Hoskins, my, my youth pastor at the Blue Church in Springfield, Pennsylvania, uh, you know, explained to me how to become a Christian, and explained to me, you know, that all I needed to do to become a Christian was to ask Jesus Christ to save me, and that his death on the cross would be would stand in place of my sins and my death that's required by God. And, uh, you know, I believed and I asked God for salvation. And from that day forward, I've been a, a an evangelical Christian. Right? Now, l- last night, I went to the, see the movie The Case for Christ. The reason why I went to see the movie The Case for Christ is our church had, my church um, had bought a block of like a hundred tickets for, uh, for case for Christ and encouraged us to invite people. But they did this on Sunday and the movie's like on Tuesday and I dragged my feet. And the reason why is I am very, very skeptical of Hollywood movies about Christianity, right? Cause I've been burnt a lot of times on them, like where they, where they get the doctrine wrong. And that's the issue is when you're talking about salvation, Every single word has freight, and every single word counts, okay? So I go to see The Case for Christ, which is the story of Lee Strobel and his book, The Case for Christ, okay? And it's the story of an an atheist's journey to becoming a Christian, okay? And uh, it's put out by Pure Flix, and it was a fantastic movie. I I really, really liked it. It was a five out of five star film. I really enjoyed it, okay? Um... And when I was done watching, now, the other thing is, I, I feel bad that I didn't invite anybody to the movie, because I do think it's it's a great evangelical tool, and I didn't trust enough to say, okay, I should reach out to all my, you know, to, fr- to my friends and say, come along for this free movie, because, like I said, I'm very skeptical of, of Hollywood movies. So at that point, one of the things that happened was, I got out of the movie, and, and I did what I like to do, I like to watch reviews for a movie after I've seen a movie because I'm thinking about the movie and I want to hear what other people who are thinking about movie think and does that line up with what I'm thinking is it really different from what I'm thinking it helps me remember certain scenes in the film helps me understand who was actually in the film because a lot of times reviewers will say their name so forth right it's a lot of fun I really like to do it so I go to get my YouTube review for uh, for Case for Christ right now I'm expecting that I'm going to land on Chris Stuckman or Moe's Nose or Screen Junkie, or Collider, uh, you know, one, one of the big, one of the big dogs. Or you know, if I was really fortunate, I actually already knew my favorite YouTube uh, um, movie reviewer is Grace Randolph. She had not reviewed The Case for Christ, which I was really disappointed about. Um, and uh, so I'm expecting to land on one of these YouTubers, right? Well, none of when I search, none of their videos come up, and I'm not sure any of them even bothered to review it, right? Maybe, maybe not, right? But someone who did review. The case for Christ are Brad and Dave from Stoned Gremlin Productions. And this was the delight of my year so far. I was just so delighted to find this review. Because, one, it, it, it was, it really, it fixed a lot of problems for me, right? Okay. 
So one, I am very skeptical of Hollywood movies um, that are making Christian films. And the reason why is I, before I saw Stone Gremlin Productions review of the film, I really f felt that these movies are preaching to the choir, right? Christians go out to see them and it says, hey, you should become a Christian. And it's no good to us because we're already Christians, right? And, uh, and then the other thing is the non-Christians generally aren't going to come to see it, right? And then if you invite them to, if you invite somebody to a movie, then, you know, and you're, you're, you're kind of handing off the work of doing evangelism to the movie, right? Well, Stone Gremlin Productions Games, so Stone Gremlin, Stone Gremlin Productions review of the case for Christ was a big old shut up Scott Garibay to me because I am 100% wrong. The case for Christ was made by Pure Flix and it was 100% effective as an evangelism tool for the co for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Brad and Dave's 30 minute review of the movie The Case for Christ is the strongest example I have ever seen of the effectiveness of an evangelism tool besides the Bible itself, okay? I've never seen something more productive, right? So these two guys are self-identified within their video as atheists, okay? They went to, and all of this is in their video. I'm not, I'm not laying this on them, right? All of this is within their within their video. They went to this Pure Flex movie to mock it, right? To to mock the case for Christ and say, oh, look at all these Christians going out and look at how ham-fisted this movie is and it has bad editing and bad lighting and bad actors. But I was stunned. I, you have to watch this, right? Their video is a work of art. It is like amazing how good it shows how an evangelism tool can be used, okay? These guys are atheists, but they went to the theater to see the case for Christ. And and if you watch their video, what they say throughout it is, this wasn't a bad film. And even more than that, the Pure Flix movies are getting better and better and better. And this is the best Pure Flix movie ever, right? And then they go point by point by point through the movie and recount what was said in the movie showing that these two atheists were fully engaged with this Christian film, understood every single point, and were, were listening carefully to the gospel. And you're like, and the thing that really gets me is I'm really curious, are they aware that their attempt to mock this Christian film actually fulfill, actually fully, it fulfills virtually every checkbox that the, the movie creators are trying to check, which is they're trying to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out to people who are enemies of the gospel of Christ and people who are resistant to the gospel of Christ and people who need to hear the gospel of Christ. So their attempt to mock the movie actually put more funds in, in the pocket of Pure Flix to go see, to go make more of these Christian films. And especially Brad, you could see that he was like, not only was he shocked at how good the Pure Flix movie was compared to the other Pure Flix movies, and really telling, they have over 100,000 subscribers. And, the, and at the time I watched it, their review had 36,000 watches. So they're telling tens of thousands of atheists, this is, this is the best Pure Flix movie that's ever been made, right? And then they're telling the story of Pure Flix movies to atheists. I was just stunned. I was like, this is amazing. I, I'm, I'm just so shocked. Are they aware that they are fulfilling the desires of the movie creators in their attempt to mock that, that movie? I was just like, this is like, it's so meta. I've never seen anything like it, right? And and the other thing is, it really, it was a real big old shut up Scott Garibay to me because I drug my feet and I did not go out and, you know, and 
get one of my friends and take them to this movie on short notice because I'm like, I don't know if this is going to be effective. But Pure Flix is way ahead of me on evangelism, right? And I am, I am dutiful. I evangelized to someone three weeks ago, right? But as a Christian, I should be evangelizing every day. And Pure Flix, by getting their movie out there and getting Brad and Dave to talk about Lee Strobel and Jesus Christ and salvation and justification and uh, a man's relationship between his father and how that relates to a man's relationship between him and God and how faith and marital status and all those things link is incredible. Like, Pure Flix movies, uh, you know, I used to really think these were preaching in the choir. Brad and Dave's review of this movie 100% proves to me that these are absolutely effective. And even, and actually I really think Brad was kind of like, not only was he thinking about how good the movie was, I really think that God is starting to call him. I, I, I think Brad from Stoned Gremlin Production may be elect. He may be called, right? And that God could be working on his heart right now, right? And that's incredible. That is just incredible to me. Like I was just, my eyes were wide, opened so wide. I was shocked. I was just absolutely shocked at the effectiveness. So I am 100% wrong. These movies are not preaching to the choir. They're clearly mean. They're clearly reaching people that need to be reached. And here's the thing. One, I, I think they've already accomplished their goal by getting the gospel out to people that would not have received the gospel that day if this movie hadn't been there, right? And, and in addition to that, if Brad is saved, if he accepts Jesus Christ, the implications of that are, are massive, you know? The budget on this film was probably 10 to $30 million, just based on what the films are us usually do, right? And so I was just like, and you know, I will take that deal any day of the week. If you save one person for $30 million, that is worth every penny, you know? To see one more person in, I would pay, you could take all the money in the world and burn it if it would, you know, if it would save one person, in my opinion. Um, and so I was just, I was stunned at watching the review by Brad and Dave from Stoned Gremlin Productions. It really proved to me that I need to be getting out there and doing everything I can and using different paths to try to share the gospel because Pure Flix was 100% successful in getting the gospel out there. And these two guys, you could tell they are not fans of the gospel and in their attempt to mock the gospel, they fully fulfilled the goals of the Christian filmmakers in this movie. And I, I think that's part, that happened because Jesus Christ's message is so beautiful and so wonderful and so full of love that even your attempt to mock him, like Stone Gremlin, Stoned Gremlin's Productions review of the case for Christ is part of the beauty of Jesus Christ's message and what he did right? We were his enemies. And he said, I love you so much that I'm going to, that I'm going to put my own death in for your death, right? And all you have to do is accept salvation and you'll be with me in heaven forever. And, you know, and, and then, and we are, we were poised as his enemy and he did that for us. Well, Pure Flix Movies made this movie and put it in front of everyone and Brad and Dave are there, you know, like showing what the interaction of evangelism should really be like. And I just, I'm stunned at, at the feat that Pure Flix, Pure Flix has accomplished. And I'm really curious if Brad and Dave are aware that by going to mock Christian films, they actually fulfill the goal of the Christian movie creators who are creating those movies, right? And it's just, it's amazing. You gotta watch it. It's it's amazing. And if you're a Christian, if you're over the if you're under age eighteen, I wouldn't watch it because it's got a lot of curse words in it. If you're over the age of, of eighteen, warning: there's a lot of curse words. Watch it anyway. And the reason why is if you read your Bible, you know that Jesus was hanging out with some people that were cursing. So it's totally worth watching. It is fascinating, and it will encourage you to evangelism. It certainly has encouraged me to up my evangelism game. Thank you. Take care.